Welcome to Electron Line. In this example, we are to construct a steel tank that holds gas. The shape of it is a cylinder with two semispheres at the end, and it's supposed to hold 100 cubic meters. What are the dimensions of this tank in such a way that we use the least amount of steel? So first of all, we're going to draw a diagram, and so we have the cylinder with the two semispheres on either end. We don't know what the length is, we don't know what the radius is, but we do know that the volume is 100 cubic meters. Next, we need to determine what we're trying to maximize or minimize. So here we're trying to minimize the amount of material used, which means we're trying to minimize the surface area of that, that uh, tank. So number two, we're trying to minimize material, which means we're trying to minimize surface area. Next, we need to come up with an equation that determines the surface area. Now notice the surface area has a cylindrical part and the two semispheres. Now together, the semispheres form a complete sphere. So it's the surface area of the cylindrical part and the surface area of basically a sphere. And so we can write that the area is equal to, the cylinder will have a surface area of 2 pi r times L, so the circumference times the length, plus the surface area of essentially a complete sphere, which would be 4 pi r squared. Notice now that the equation for the surface area has two variables in it, both r and L, and so we have to eliminate one of those variables, which means we need a constraint and the constraint, of course, is that the volume must be 100 cubic meters, which means that for number four, step four, we need to find a constraint. And the constraint tells us that the volume, which is equal to 100 cubic meters, is equal to the volume of the cylindrical part, which is pi r squared times L. So it would be the surface, it would be the cross section times the length, plus the volume of the two halves, the two semispheres, together form a complete sphere, so that would be 4 thirds pi r cubed. Now what we need to do here is solve this equation for L, so we can substitute it in for L over here. Let's see here, we can say that pi r squared L is equal to 100 minus this other term, which is 4 thirds pi r cubed, and then divide both sides by pi r squared. We now have an equation for the length. Hmm, should we simplify that? Well, we'll do that when we get over here. So let's hang in there. So then, for step number five, we're going to use the equation of a constraint and eliminate one of our variables. So that becomes step five. The area is equal to 2 pi r times L and L can be written as 100 minus 4 thirds pi r cubed divided by pi r squared. So that's instead of L plus 4 pi r squared. Now, of course, we probably want to simplify that just a little bit. We have a pi here and a pi there, an r there, cancel out one of those r's. And now we can go ahead and write it out as a single equation we have A is equal to 200 divided by R. Or we could write 200 times R to the minus 1 power. Here we can write this 2 times this would be minus 8 thirds pi R squared because this R will cancel out one of those. So we have 8 thirds pi R squared. And then we still have this one here would be plus 4 pi r squared. Let's see here. Now we have a pi r squared here, we have a pi r squared there. Well, we'll worry about that later. We can, or we can, I guess, combine them. So 4 pi and 8, eight third, that would be 12 thirds plus 8 thirds, oh, minus 8 thirds, so let's write it like this. A equals 200 r to the minus 1, and that would be um, minus 8 thirds pi r squared. And here we can write this as plus 12 thirds pi r squared. So this is negative, that's positive. Combining them gives us 4 thirds, oh yeah, 4 thirds pi r squared. So coming up here, we have A 
is equal to 200 r to the negative 1 plus 4 thirds pi r squared. Now we're ready to go on to the next step. Now we need to take the derivative and set the derivative equal to 0. So in this case, we have a prime is equal to minus 200 divided by r squared. And here this becomes plus 8 over 3 pi times r. And now we set that equal to 0. So we get 0 is equal to minus 200 over r squared plus 8 thirds pi times r. All right, now let's see here. We can bring over this term over here. 200 over r squared is equal to 8 thirds pi times r. And then when we rearrange terms a little bit, the equation now becomes, on one side, we end up with r cubed equals 3 times 2, that would be 600, divided by 8, and divided by pi, 8 pi. Okay, so now we have r is equal to, now we have to take the cube root of that. So we take 600 divided by 8 divided by pi, and we then raise that to the 1 third power equals, and we end up with a radius equal to 2.879, and of course the units would be in meters. So that would be the radius of the tank. Now we have to determine the length of the tank. And of course, we already have an equation that tells us what the length of the tank is equal to in terms of the radius. So what we need to do now is go ahead and work this out. So 2.879 cubed, so we're going to cube that. So we have L is equal to 100 minus 4 thirds pi times 2.879 quantity cubed divided by pi times 2.879 quantity squared. So let's see what the length is equal to in this case. So we're going to cube that. Multiply it times pi times 4 divided by 3 equals, and wow, that's quite interesting. Notice the length becomes the following. L equals 100 minus 100 divided by pi times 2.879 quantity squared, which means the length equals zero. What this is telling us, that the cheapest way to build a tank like this, to use the least amount of steel, and yet have a volume of 100 cubic meters, that you simply eliminate the cylindrical portion, take the two ends, put it together, and have a spherical tank with a radius equal to 2.879 meters. Because when you take the volume of 4 thirds pi r cubed, when r is equal to this value, you get a value of 100 cubic meters. And so that does seem to work. And so for, point a, for part a, to check, we say the volume equals 4 thirds pi r cubed. And when we plug in the value of 2.879 meters and we cube that, we do indeed get a volume of 100 cubic meters. So that's quite interesting. If you want to build the cheapest tank, use the least amount of material, you simply eliminate the cylindrical portion, take the two halves together, the two spherical semispheres, and put it together, and that gives you the tank using the least amount of material. And that's how it's done.